Welcome to today's Journey Through Time on Daily History Podcast. In this first section, we're setting the stage for one of the greatest adventures in American history, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. But to truly understand the magnitude of this journey, we need to travel back to the year 1803 to an event that dramatically changed the United States, the Louisiana Purchase. This land deal between the United States and France, spearheaded by President Thomas Jefferson, effectively doubled the size of the nation, adding over 800,000 square miles of unexplored territory west of the Mississippi River. Now, let's delve into the vision of President Jefferson. A man of enlightenment thinking, Jefferson was captivated by the prospects of scientific discovery, the expansion of the nation, and the potential wealth of natural resources and trade routes waiting in the western part of the continent. His foresight in securing the Louisiana Purchase was also a strategic move to eliminate French presence from the region and to ensure American access to the important port of New Orleans. Despite the acquisition, much of the territory remained a mystery, and that's where the Lewis and Clark expedition enters our tale. Officially dubbed the Corps of Discovery, the expedition had several key goals. First, they were to scout the newly acquired lands for viable waterways, particularly a passage to the Pacific Ocean, which was crucial for trade and expansion. Second, they were charged with documenting the natural environment, cataloging new flora and fauna, and mapping the geography of the vast unknown. Third, and no less important, was establishing diplomatic relations and trade with the Native American tribes they encountered. Let us now turn our attention to a pivotal moment in the story of the Lewis and Clark expedition, the selection of its leaders, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. It was in 1803 that President Thomas Jefferson made the momentous decision to entrust his personal secretary, Meriwether Lewis, with the responsibility of charting the newly acquired Louisiana Territory. Born on August 18, 1774, in Virginia, Lewis was well acquainted with the challenges of frontier life. Highly regarded for his military service and natural leadership abilities, he possessed an insatiable curiosity for the natural sciences, which made him a suitable candidate for the role of an explorer. In preparation for the journey, Lewis immersed himself in intensive studies, often at the president's own residence at Monticello. He was trained in botanical, zoological, astronomical, and geographical observations, so as to document the expedition comprehensively. The rigors of his training were complemented by his camaraderie with William Clark, whom he chose as a co-commander. Clark, born on August 1, 1770, in Virginia, was a seasoned frontiersman. Having served with Lewis in the military, Clark brought a wealth of experience. His expertise in cartography, his survival skills, and his leadership during frontier conflicts were indispensable for the mission at hand. Together, Lewis and Clark set about forming the core of discovery. This elite group, composed of volunteers, was to embark on an epic quest to explore the western half of the continent. They sought robust individuals with skills that ranged from hunting to blacksmithing, individuals who could face the unknown with courage and resilience. Each man was meticulously selected for his expertise and fortitude. By the winter of 1803, the Corps of Discovery was assembled, ready to venture into the uncharted American West to fulfill Jefferson's vision and forge a path into the annals of history. Venturing beyond the familiar boundaries of the United States, the Corps of Discovery faced untold challenges that would test their resolve and survival skills to the fullest. The wilderness, sprawling and untamed, was a formidable adversary. Without marked trails or maps to guide them, Lewis and Clark led their team through landscapes vast and variably hostile. Onward they marched, into the heart of nature's grandest obstacles. Among the many trials, navigation was a colossal endeavor. Relying primarily on celestial bodies and the winding rivers, the expedition constantly grappled with finding their bearings. On May 14, 1804, when the journey commenced from Camp Dubois near present-day Hartford, Illinois, they cruised up the Missouri River. The river, however, was treacherous, 
filled with snags, sandbars, and strong currents that threatened to capsize their boats. Days turned into weeks as the team meticulously recorded their route, often with the aid of friendly Native American tribes who provided invaluable guidance. Unforgiving terrains brought further complexities. The Rocky Mountains loomed large, presenting a maze of peaks and valleys never before crossed by European Americans. The bitter cold, the scarcity of food, and the thin mountain air hampered their progress, and health problems began to arise. Scurvy and dysentery took hold, driven by poor nutrition and lack of proper medical supplies. Imagine navigating this rugged wilderness with nothing but sheer determination, carrying the weight of an entire nation's westward ambition. The wild creatures of the unexplored west served both as a wonder and a frequent hazard. Grizzly bears, vastly more aggressive than the bears the men knew from the east, posed a lethal danger. Encounters with these towering beasts resulted in harrowing tales of survival, like that near the White Bear Islands in late May 1805, where Meriwether Lewis himself narrowly avoided a deadly confrontation. Day-to-day -day life on the expedition entailed a symphony of hardship and toil, from the forging of rivers to the hunting for sustenance, each day's end brought exhaustion. The daily struggle was not for the faint of heart. It required every ounce of grit the Corps had. Despite persistent setbacks, the spirit of exploration pushed them onward, steeled by the belief that each mile covered paved the way for a nation expanding towards the Pacific. In these stretches of harsh wilderness, the distinction between life and death often hinged on the cooperative spirit and quick wits of the Corps members. Their endurance against all odds carved a pathway through the new world that would mark a lasting trace in the annals of American exploration. As our journey with Lewis and Clark continues, we turn our attention to the pivotal interactions and breakthrough discoveries that mark this storied expedition. The Corps of Discovery, braving the wilds of the American frontier, would find themselves in the midst of numerous indigenous nations. These encounters were critical, not just for diplomacy and trade, but also for the invaluable guidance and knowledge that was shared by the native peoples. It was 1804 when Lewis and Clark initiated contact with the Oto and Missouri tribes near present-day Council Bluffs. But it was the assistance from the Mandan and Hidatsa tribes in the winter of 1804 to 1805 that proved indispensable for the expedition's survival and success. Here, the Corps of Discovery would build Fort Mandan and spend the winter absorbing knowledge about the land and forging crucial alliances. Within these native communities, the explorers encountered Sacagawea, a Shoshone woman whose language skills and expertise became a lifeline for the expedition. And it wasn't just people the Corps met, but also a wealth of new species. The prairies and mountains yielded sightings of creatures never before documented by Western science, such as the pronghorn antelope, the black-tailed prairie dog, and that formidable monarch of the North American plains, the bison. As the expedition traversed the Rocky Mountains and descended the Columbia River, their botanical discoveries expanded with the identification of various plants, bitterroot, red-flowered Lewisia, and the western red cedar. Each specimen collected added volumes to the understanding of America's rich natural diversity. Significant events shaped the course of their expedition too. One such event was the harrowing passage through the treacherous rapids of the Columbia River, which they navigated with daring and determination in the autumn of 1805. This passage highlighted not just the physical courage of the explorers, but also their adaptability and resourcefulness in the face of such daunting challenges. Finally, on November 7, 1805, William Clark penned a journal entry that simply read, Ocean in view, oh, the joy. This exultant cry signaled the fulfillment of one of their chief objectives, the reaching of the Pacific Ocean. It marked a turning point in the journey, the realization that the continent had been crossed and the dream of a nation stretching from sea to shining sea was within grasp. The return journey would soon begin, laden with stories of interactions, discoveries, and experiences that would echo through history. 
Ladies and gentlemen, while the chronicle of the Lewis and Clark expedition often reverberates with the names of its two captains, it is within the silent shadow of history where we find the true embodiment of courage and guidance in the figure of Sacagawea. This Shoshone woman, whose very name has become synonymous with the undaunted spirit of the expedition, provided not merely translation services with the native tribes, but an invaluable compass of insight into the wilderness. Among her many contributions, Sacagawea, who joined the Corps of Discovery in her teenage years, played a pivotal role in the success of the journey, beginning in the year 1805. Despite bearing the weight of new motherhood upon her shoulders, she exhibited unparalleled resilience. It was Sacagawea who guided the party through the intricate topology of the Rocky Mountains, and her presence often ensured peaceful encounters with native tribes, a testament to her diplomatic prowess. Yet, alongside Sacagawea, there were others whose names seldom bubbled to the surface of popular remembrance, figures such as York, Clark's enslaved servant who astonished tribes with his strength and complexion, or Toussaint Charbonneau, Sacagawea's husband, who, despite his lesser-known role, was part of this monumental endeavor. The fabric of their narratives is interwoven with the tales of American conquest, and their contributions have formed the bedrock upon which much of our understanding of the early American frontier has been built. As we cast a light upon these unsung heroes, we see the transparency of collective effort, a harmonic convergence of skills, backgrounds, and cultures which propelled the Lewis and Clark expedition forward. From the astute navigational inputs of individuals such as Pierre Cruzat, a seasoned riverman with an acute knowledge of the Missouri's treacherous currents, to the unwavering support rendered by other members like Jean-Baptiste Lepage, each person's role was a thread in the tapestry of this storied campaign. It is in the reflection of this interdependent tapestry that we find the clearest view of the expedition's success. Beyond the empirical achievements and mapped territories, the Lewis and Clark expedition stands as a profound example of collaborative endeavor and the quintessential synergy of human spirit facing the unknown together. Their collective triumph transcends individual accolades, cementing their voyage as not merely a passage through lands, but a journey into the very heart of teamwork and unity. As we draw near to the final chapter of our discussion on the Lewis and Clark expedition, we cast our gaze upon the profound aftermath and enduring imprint it left on the face of American history. It's difficult to overstate the vast expansionist impact that this journey facilitated. With the completion of the expedition in 1806, the narrative of the United States took a turn towards a continental dimension, setting in motion the belief in the manifest destiny that propelled westward expansion. The expedition's cartographic contributions were invaluable, providing the first accurate maps of the expansive territory acquired through the Louisiana Purchase. The co-leaders, with their team, meticulously charted rivers and mountain ranges laid down by paths that cursive in today's atlases. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, often navigating by instinct and stars, transformed the wild, undefined expanse of the American West into a lattice of potential pathways for settlers, traders, and future explorations. Their maps and journals also encouraged further expeditions, leading to the growth and establishment of new communities, and eventually, states. The legacy of the Lewis and Clark expedition cannot just be measured in acres or miles. It dwells deep within the American spirit of discovery and adventure. The odyssey of these trailblazers established a template for exploration, combining scientific inquiry, geographic exploration, and cultural diplomacy. This hallmark endeavor foreshadowed an America that would reach for the skies and later the stars, relentless in its pursuit of knowledge and expansion. In our collective memory, the journey persists, a testament to both human curiosity and courage, a monumental pilgrimage in understanding the natural world and ourselves within it. Today, we stand upon the shoulders of these early explorers who powered through adversity and the unknown with unwavering resolve, cementing a legacy that not only mapped the physical contours of a nation, 
but also charted an adventurous course for future generations. The echoes of their achievements continue to resonate through time, a beacon that guides the never-ending quest for exploration in the heart of every American. As we conclude our segment, let the spirit of the Lewis and Clark expedition remind us all that the thirst for discovery is an indelible, enduring mark upon the human soul, as alive today as it was over two centuries ago. Thank you for joining us on Daily History Podcast. If you've enjoyed this expedition through the pages of history, remember to subscribe and leave us your feedback. Curious about another historical adventure? Drop your suggestions in the comments below, and the one with the most likes could be our next topic. Until then, keep exploring, and we'll meet again on the next episode of Daily History Podcast.